Hey everybody! Welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It's very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up squad? <laughs> so guys, welcome to your readings for the month of December 2018. We are already at the end of the year. Where has the time gone, right? Um, we're coming up on the one year anniversary of when I started this channel. I started it January 8th of 2018, and it's been a really amazing year so far. Um, to grow to 12,000 subscribers in, you know, under a year, I mean, I hit the, I think I hit the 12,000 mark in October, I want to say. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Like, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for your support, for liking, sharing, subscribing, for just being here, especially to those of us, or those of you that are on this Twin to Flame journey. Thank you so much for being such an amazing support system, not just for me, but for everyone else that is on here. I mean, I don't know what I would do without the support of this community here we have on YouTube and everything. So I just want to give a big shout out to all of you guys. You're amazing. And for those of you that are just finding the channel, welcome to the community. Welcome to the group. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the club. Yes. So I also want to wish everybody a very happy holidays, no matter what you celebrate during this holiday season. And even if it's just for New Year's, happy holidays and happy new year, guys. It's going to be, 2019 is going to be really awesome. I can feel it. I'm really excited to, to start, to get started. Yeah. So I just want to make a quick point about um, Western astrology versus Eastern astrology. Uh, so many of you that have been following me for some time know that I recently started studying uh, Eastern or Vedic or sidereal astrology and for me personally, it's been so powerfully transformative and so accurate that I really adopted a lot of that. So that is why in the description box, you'll see I have two options. I have two versions, my Western chart and my Eastern chart. Um, I put that both of those there for those of you that still resonate with the Western chart. And I did receive a question from someone at one point asking which one... Um, you're, you are when it comes to my channel. I would say, I would recommend that you really investigate your Eastern uh, Vedic or Sidereal. They're all the same. They're like the same name for one name for the uh, different names for the same situation. <laughs> but uh, I would say, I recommend that you look up your Eastern chart because more than likely, or yeah, more than likely, most likely you are going to resonate with that one. It's more accurate. Um, it has more detail. Not everybody does. Some people find that they still resonate with the Western. So that's why I keep both of those situations there. Ultimately, it is your choice to figure, to, to understand or decipher which one, which side you resonate with more. Me personally, in my personal opinion, and if I were to approach you and have a conversation with you, I would lean more towards the Eastern side of things, but ultimately that is your decision. So if you want to figure, like, watch both sides, um, whatever signs you resonate or you have in your chart and see which side resonates with you, go right ahead. Um, but ultimately, I'm leaving that up for you guys to decide, okay? But anyway, so these are your messages for the month of December. Um, these are general, re uh, general messages. So take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If something does not fit, please do not try to make it fit. You'll only make yourself uncomfortable in the process, yes? Um, they're general readings, so these energies are fluid. Um, they could, we could be talking about you specifically. We could be talking about someone else that you're connecting with or someone that's surrounding you. Again, take what resonates and leave what doesn't. I am available for private readings. All the information is in the description box below. I am going to be taking it a bit easy for the month of December, um, but I'm still available. So if you want to get a reading, go ahead and look at the description box. Yes. Um, keeping it cute, as always, with the normal stuff. We've got the Golden Universal Tarot, and we've got Oracle Guidance from the Oracle of the Unicorns. I love unicorns. And if you know me, if you've been following the channel, you know just how much I love unicorns. Yeah? So I guess that's it, guys. Without further ado, let's do it. Hello Aquarius, welcome to your reading for the month of December 2018. Thank you so much for joining me. Sorry, my lips are a little dry. <laughs> okay, let's just get straight into it, shall we? Hi Spirit, please make me a clear channel for all Aquarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of December 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. <clears throat> all right, Aquarius. So 
I'm seeing green um, and I'm hearing art, heart chakra activation and also heart chakra clearing. Now, as I was doing the pre-shuffle, the uh, uh, death popped out. Um, also the king of wands. Um, so you could be dealing with a fire sign <clears throat> or you could be dealing with a twin flame as in the divine masculine. Um, and then when I finished, when I finished the pre-shuffle, death was on the bottom of the deck. So I really feel like there's some major transformations coming through, uh, happening for you right now. You could also be dealing with a Scorpio, but this also could be a message about Scorpio season. Okay. We are, um, in Western astrology, we are officially in Sagittarius season right now. Um, or if you follow Eastern astrology, we're actually in Scorpio season right now. Either way, I feel like for many of you, Scorpio season has really facilitated a major change within you. It's really helped triggered a lot of heart chakra clearing and ultimately heart chakra activation. All right. All right, Aquarius. I'm going to give you one more shuffle and then we'll see what we've got for you here. Aquarius. All right. Here we go. Let's cut the deck. All righty, Aquarius. Overall energy, starting you off with justice. Yes. Very much leading to that heart chakra clearing activation. Could be dealing with some sort of legal system, maybe a divorce. Um, you could also be dealing with a Libra, or Libra could be in your chart. This also could be a message um, about Libra season. Maybe something happened during Libra season that uh, was, was something was triggered during Libra season and then um, through Scorpio season you dealt with a lot of it and you might still be dealing with that because you have the Nine of Swords here. So this is fear and anxiety and for a lot of you I'm picking up specifically that you're feeling this energy as you move through this heart chakra cleansing, okay? You've got the Ten of Wands. Look at this. So, um, burdens, okay? Uh, you a lot of you may have become aware of your burdens and um, in Western astrology with Mercury moving retrograde at this current moment it's going to be going direct around December 6th um, but if, in Western astrology it's moving through Sagittarius in retrograde um, there has been a lot of purging that's happening because of it um, uh, because of this retrograde and a lot of people have been becoming very starkly aware of their burdens and how they're being held back and how they're just carrying too much of a load. And for some of you with the nine of swords here, you may, you may be in a, a period where it's like, you don't even know how you can even release a lot of these burdens, or you're just super anxious about it, mainly because you just don't know what to do, or it's just a really tough thing to handle. And ultimately on the bottom here of everything, you have the two of wands. So there is, there is a decision that needs to be made. Um, a lot of this clearing and purging that you're going through is helping you embark on a new journey, choose a new direction in your path, okay, on your life journey and all that good stuff. So while it might feel tumultuous and um, painful and exhausting even, ultimately it's serving your highest good. It's bringing greater justice into your life and it's helping you embark on a new direction, okay? For your first row here, first set of surrounding energies, you've got the Queen of Pentacles. You could be dealing with a Capricorn. There could be Capricorn energy in your in your chart. This is also, I'm picking up some sort of motherly energy. Um, maybe some of these burdens have to do with family, have to do with um, maybe a mother figure in your life, a maternal figure in your life. Um, I'm picking up that for some of you, some of these burdens that you're holding on to, that you've been carrying for so long that you're needing to release, have been passed down. They're ancestral. They're things that you have picked up in your early childhood from your parents, grandparents, cousins, aunts, uncles, uh, just ancestors in general. Things that could have been passed down throughout the family through generations. You also could be adopting this Queen of Pentacles energy in the fact that you are becoming more of a mother to yourself. You're being more nurturing, more caring, more loving to yourself, which is also... Um, facilitating and probably a product of this heart chakra activation and clearing that you're dealing with, okay? Queen of Pentacles is coupled with, 
Ah, the Eight of Swords. Feeling trapped. This is definitely some of us, or I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not an Aquarius, but <laughs> this is, I say us because we're all part of the human collective. But for some of you Aquarians out there, or maybe even a cross watcher, there is a mother figure that's really getting into the, getting in the way. Um, spe more specifically, you might be in the process of wanting to marry someone, but the burdens of your family are keeping that from happening. What would my mother think? What would my grandmother think? What the, the, this, that, and the other. That's for a select uh, few of you. But there's definitely some sort of entrapment brought on by some sort of motherly energy, okay? Second set of surrounding energies for you, Aquarius, we've got a temperance, Sagittarius energy. This would be uh, Mercury in retrograde moving through Sagittarius as far as the Western chart is concerned. Uh, I'm sorry, the Western system. Um, but this is also, you could be dealing with a Sagittarian. Uh, at the same time, you could, this is really just balancing out, okay? Temperance is the the angel of patience this is an, a card of alchemy uh bringing some things together opposing things together to form a new compound this is needing to be patient with yourself and with the process okay this is divinely guided ultimately this is in service of your highest good aquarius or even the cross watcher if you're involved with the situation temperance is coupled with the nine of pentacles. So here you go. This is autonomy. This is abundance. This is also rewards. So as you move through this situation and you release yourself of these burdens and you go through this tempering act, ultimately you will be rewarded. Most of this reward is going to be in the form of abundance, sure, but this abundance is going to be in the form of independence, autonomy. Some of you may be coming single um, recently, like I said, you could be going through, some of you might be dealing with a divorce, um, which is then allowing you to be basically set free, even if it may not look like that on the surface. Your challenge in this first set of energies, you've got the two of swords. The challenge here is to take the blindfolds off and see things as they truly are. And then as a result, make a decision. Yeah. Two of Swords is coupled with, uh, hey, the King of Cups. So you could be dealing with a Scorpio specifically, um, or maybe even another water sign, Cancer or Pisces. Um, but some of you are dealing with a manipulative, narcissistic, masculine energy. Also, though, especially with the message of... Um, potentially Scorpio season being a thing for you, or for someone at least, this is, the challenge here is needing to see things that Scorpio season has brought up and see them clearly. Take the blindfolds off and look at them. Face them. Make a decision about it. Okay? But there's definitely, for others of you, there's definitely some sort of narcissistic and manipulative energy that's going on here, emotionally speaking, and some of you are refusing to acknowledge it because you may be very much in this Queen of Pentacles energy, which is nurturing, caring, loving. But in this case, especially with the Eight of Swords here, this would be a negatively aspected Queen of Pentacles in the sense that she, and in this sense, now, now the Queen of Pentacles can be many things um, in reverse or negatively aspected. But here in this situation, it's like someone that doesn't necessarily have a backbone. Someone doesn't, that doesn't have, and I, I apologize if that's triggering anyone. I don't mean it in an offensive way, but if you're allowing someone to control you like in the way a, a narcissist would, you don't really have uh, your own personal foundation to fall upon. And so you are accepting whatever else someone creates for you. Okay. It's a bit of a tough message, but someone needs to hear it. Someone needs to see this for what it truly is. Your final message here for the first row, for you, Aquarius, we have the Hermit. Could be dealing with a Virgo. Also, though, this is definitely saying you need to go within, take some time away, and figure yourself out. Learn more about yourself. Find more of your inner light. For some of you, gain more of a backbone. And stand firm in your truth in who you 
already know you really are, truly are, to be quite honest. I'm not even going to lie. Like, many of you already know who you are, but you're allowing this manipulative, narcissistic energy to take you away from that, to, 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 stri to allow you to stray from that, okay? The Hermit is coupled with... Aha! The Ten of Swords. Yep. You need to go within, okay? To understand yourself, understand yourself more, 11-11 on the counter. Understand yourself more, find more of your inner light and the guidance that comes from that inner light and bring this situation to completion. Because if you see here, in your overall energy, you're very much at the Nine of Swords. So it's over. The Nine is about endings. The situation has come to an end, but it's not quite completed yet because you're still carrying the burdens, all right? Okie dokie. For the second set of energies here for your month of December, first set of surrounding energies in the second set, you have the Three of Pentacles. Self-mastery. Working in tandem with yourself in order to create something new. Also, some of you could be embarking on some sort of new entrepreneurial ship endeavor um, when this autonomy really comes into play with the Knight of Pentacles, you could be doing that. You could already be doing that now, okay? And the balancing, the al alchemy that's going on right now is in greater service of whatever business endeavors or abundance or rewards you're working towards, yeah? Three of Pentacles is coupled with the Six of Cups. So the Three of Pentacles really does talk about self-mastery. So for many of you, or for some of you, what you're needing to do is work through um, the past, work through ancestral situations, um, work through childhood karma, past life karma, and build yourself up better, master yourself in a greater way in the face of, those, of that sort of situation, okay? Some of you um, may be dealing with a Capricorn, especially since, you know, the Queen of Pentacles here. The Queen of Pentacles does symbolize Capricorn energy. Some of you may also have Capricorn in your chart. Um, some of you, if that resonates with you, you may want to watch the Capricorn video because this actually is the title of it, Working Through Past Life Karma or something like that, okay? So that may be resonating with some of you Aquarians out there or maybe even a cross watcher. Second set of surrounding energies for your second row here, Aquarius, we have the Ten of Pentacles, which is falling right underneath the Nine of Pentacles, okay? So you really could be coming into an autonomous place, a more independent place that is ultimately serving you very well career and financially wise, okay? Could also be serving you family wise. Ten of Pentacles is coupled with, woof, the Five of Cups. All right, so some of you really have to go through some sort of regret, um, heartbreak, guilt, shame, or whatnot. You got to work through that, all right, in order to really facilitate this Ten of Pentacles, however that looks for you. It could be a family situation. It could be a career situation, all right? But there is some residual energy here with the Five of Cups of some things that have spilled. The Three of Cups that have spilled might be a social situation. But ultimately, you have these two cups here. The two of cups is right behind this person. And a lot recently, the two of cups has been symbolizing the union of masculine and feminine energies within the self. So let these, whatever has spilled, let it go. Have your moment of, uh, of grief. You know, work through all those emotions. But then when you're ready, turn around and pick up your two cups that are remaining. Bring your masculine and feminine energies together within and that will help you get going on your ten of pentacles again however that looks for you all right your challenge in the second half of uh, or the second row here you've got the nine of wands interesting so, and because you have the ten of wands up here that's some really interesting mirroring aquarius Your challenge is to stop fighting. To stop fighting and finally let these challenges or these, yeah, these challenges, these burdens go. Let them go. Nine of Wands is coupled with, yeah, oh man, look at that. The Six of Swords. Your challenge is to stop fighting and move on. 
Because I really feel like many of you are fighting needlessly at this point. You're just spinning your wheels over and over and over and over and not really getting anywhere new. Well, now the universe is saying to you, cut yourself away from this. Cut yourself out of these burdens. Move from tumultuous waters to calmer waters. All right? Your closing message for this second row here, Aquarius, you got... Ooh, the Seven of Swords. Now, some of you may not necessarily want to be so outspoken about what you're going through. Some of you, there's deception. Hello, King of Cups is in the challenge and aspect in the first row. And to me, that was, I was picking up some narcissistic energy, sociopath, um, emotionally abusive, maybe even physically abusive for a very select few of you. I don't know, it may be possible. Now, if you're removing yourself from a situation like that, yes, you want to practice some discernment because you don't want anyone to get in there and sabotage your efforts. But for some of you, someone's lying to you with the Seven of Swords, all right? Also, um, this could be uh, 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 Seven of Swords, I believe, is the moon in Aquarius. And we are talking Aquarius here. Archangel Michael's going by. There's some things that need to be cut out, guys. But the moon in Aquarius talks about detachment. Maybe even extreme detachment sometimes. But I really feel like that's an energy that needs to be adopted here in order for this justice to be served, okay? Seven of Swords is coupled with... Yeah, look at that. The Knight of Pentacles. And this was the first thing I picked up on when the Seven of Swords came out. You need to be discreet discerning of who knows about what you're moving towards. I am not encouraging anyone to be unfaithful. But what I'm saying here is if you are in a situation that you're working your way out of, take it step by step, step by step, slowly but surely, and you don't have to be all upfront and honest about it right away. You do have the ability to get your plans together Figure out what it is you need or want to do. Figure out how it is you're going to do it. And then once you're putting the plan into place and things are working in that direction, then you can talk about it. Then you can say, okay, this is what's happening. But for now, slow and steady wins the race. You got to be methodical about it. You got to be discreet. Okay? Excellent. Now, let's close out your reading with oracle guidance from the... Unicorn Oracle, yeah? All right, best messages for Aquarius for the month of a December. December! <laughs> I wanna wish you guys a very happy holiday. I know this is probably not the best message to be hearing during the holiday season, but I mean, such is life, right? <laughs> All right, Aquarius, let's see what we've got for you. Best messages, please, spirit. Oh, there we go. <sighs> Awareness. Underneath the deck, you have compassion. Be gentle with yourself. Forgiveness will set you free. See the light in yourself and in others. And I know, I know how difficult that is. Eric, that is so much easier said than done. I get it. I get it. But then... You have awareness. And awareness is talking about also not only being aware of what's going on around you, but aware of how you may have contributed to it. And once you get to that point, then you can work towards forgiving and seeing the light in others, as well as yourself. Awareness says, live in the moment. Be conscious of your thoughts. Look for signs and guidance. So for those of you that are caught in this Two of Swords energy here, coupled with the King of Cups, awareness is your key, my dear. Alrighty. So there it is, Aquarius. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I am available for private readings. I am not going to be taking as many as normal throughout the month of December, just because you know we are in a bit of a restful, pe restful period. It is the holiday season. Um, so I don't really want to be working myself too hard. 
right now. Um, but I am still available. My email address is in the description box below, along with all of the readings that I offer. Please go ahead, don't, don't hesitate to read through that and email me. If you can't decide which reading to order, the email me anyway. We'll discuss the situation a little bit and we'll get something going for you, yeah? Either way, I wish you all so much love, happy holidays to you, and I look forward to connecting with you again very soon. Yes? Take care. Mwah! Bye!